there's something going on in the outer solar system. You see, scientists are discovering more and more objects outside the orbit of Neptune, so-called trans-Neptunian objects. And if you look at the ones with a high elliptical orbit, they all have a tendency to have their high point in the orbit pointing in approximately the same direction. This is statistically very unlikely to happen naturally, and this is why it's been theorized for years that there must be a ninth planet out there. Recently there's been an article published on Archive suggesting that maybe Planet 9 is not a planet at all. This channel is all about sharing knowledge, and this is why I'm proud to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is one of the largest online learning communities. They have thousands of classes by professionals in their fields on everything from astrophotography to animation, web development, marketing, or business management. All classes are neatly divided into chapters, which means you can follow them at your own pace. And if you sign up with the link in the description, you will get a two month free premium membership. And if it turns out it's not for you, just close your account and it won't have cost you a penny. So stay curious learn a new skill with Skillshare. In the article published by Jacob Schulst and James Orban, they suggest that what if Planet 9 is in fact something called a primordial black hole. Now, this is like a micro black hole, but if it had the similar mass to what Planet 9 is expected to have, it would still explain the weird orbits of the trans object, but it would also explain some of the observed micro lensing effects that have been determined to be caused by objects of similar mass to what Planet 9 is expected to have. Primordial black holes are not created from collapsing stars as more traditional black holes are. Now, instead, these were created at the beginning of the universe in the first second after the Big Bang. You see, back then everything was very dense and very hot, but mass wasn't evenly distributed throughout the universe. And it's in fact these small variations in the mass distribution that's caused the collapse into planets and galaxies and everything. But the theory is that it could happen that in some places, the mass got so dense that a gravitational collapse started and formed micro black holes. Now, they were first proposed by two Russian scientists, Seldovich and Novikov, in 1966. Uh, Stephen Hawking did a study into them in 1971, and he theorized that they could in fact exist. In fact, they could have been created with a mass down to 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. That's about the weight of a single hair from an eyelash. So they could in fact have been very, very small. Now black holes that small wouldn't really exist today, they would probably have evaporated due to Hawking radiation. But if they had a mass initially of around 10 to the 11 or 100 million metric tons, they could in fact have survived until today. So we can still have black holes out there with very, very small masses compared to what we would normally expect them to have. They could certainly exist uh, with the size and the mass of what we expect Planet 9 to have. Primordial black holes is at the moment just a, a theory, a hypothesis. They have never actually been confirmed. We never have hard evidence that they actually exist. But there are more to them than just being random rogue black holes flying around. You see, they are fairly what's called collisionless, meaning they don't really have a tendency to, if you have a two galaxies full of them and the two galaxies collide, they, they wouldn't really have a tendency to merge with each other that much. Um, they are relatively stable, um, they move at non-relativistic velocities and they were created at the beginning of the universe. This makes them really good candidates for dark matter. Everything we have observed in the universe today, stars, planets, gas, comets, everything, is what's called bionic matter. And bionic matter only makes up about 4% of our universe. The rest of it is a combination of dark matter and dark energy. So in theory, there could be millions, trillions of these small micro black holes floating around that we can't see, obviously, because they don't really emit any light. But how do a primordial black hole end up in the outer reaches of our solar system? Well, it would most likely have been captured. It would obviously predate our solar system, but probably at some point it could have drifted into range and been captured just like any other captured object. So going back to the article we talked about in the beginning, why is this so interesting? Well, you see, when people are looking for planets out beyond Neptune's orbit, they're mostly looking in the optical, infrared, microwave area, looking for moving objects, anything moving out there that emits anything in, in these wave bands. But if it turns out it's a primordial black hole, we're not going to be able to see it in those bands. We have to look in the X-ray and the gamma bands instead. And that's the point of the article. They're suggesting that Maybe we should widen our search and not just look in the wave bands that we expect it to be, 
but maybe go out and look a little bit beyond that. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give a like, subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.